Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk, where we're gonna discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, I'm gonna get into something that I've never done before, which is casting. We're gonna cast some brass today. For what? To make one of these. What is this? This is the pommel nut that's going to appear on this sword. This is a U.S. Navy officer sword that I'm working on. You will see that build video at some point. Um, but I need to cast this piece because it's got a lot of detail in, in it that I don't think I can carve into a piece of brass. So we're going to cast it. This is my first time casting anything. So come along on the journey with me and we'll see if we can get it done. So let's talk about what we're going to need for this project. Uh, so first off, I have a crucible. This is what we're going to be melting the brass in. For the brass for this project, I've got some old uh, 308 shells, that uh, casings. So we're going to be using those. Uh, this is a, it's called a flask. Really, it's a mold, so you can put the sand in. That's, this is the sand. This is special ultra fine sand and the the finer it is the more detail you can get so we're going to be placing the sand in here pounding it down putting this little guy in here and then we're going to pour it i'll be using my forge to melt the brass uh, and then pulling the uh, crucible out with these tongs hopefully we can make this work so the first thing i'm going to do is prepare the uh, the mold that i'm going to be using uh, to cast this uh, I'm going to be, normally you would put your piece in here, put the sand on it, then flip it over. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to put the sand all through here, and I'm going to press this in, and then put the top on and put all the sand on. First off, this piece here is not thick enough for what I want, so I'm going to wrap a bunch of tape around this so that it's thicker, because I'm going to be using a quarter inch um, tap here. So let's get that done. It turns out this tape wasn't a great idea. You'll see in a minute. I started by packing the sand down in the bottom part of the flask, and then I used this piece of aluminum just to hammer it down really tight. After I level out the top of the sand, I press my piece into it, and then I cover the top with talcum powder just so it releases from the other half. Now I put the top half of the flask on, add some sand, and start pressing it down. But my problem is trying to get the piece out because the tape kind of sticks, and I ended up ruining it. My first lesson is to make sure you have something you can pull out of the sand without destroying it. Let's try that again. This time I'm going to forego the tape and I'm just going to widen the hole afterwards. I love your shoes. You look so sexified, honey. I'm going to put that in the video. You should. <laughs> so now I'm using a big pen just to widen the hole a little bit. I think somehow I got this on an angle and you'll see later. Now I just put the two halves of the flask back together and we're ready to pour. Well, I didn't consider this when I bought the crucible. We have a problem. I think I'm going to put this in the oven. Let's go check. Well, not my desired uh, outcome, but it's going to work at least. And who knows? Maybe this will work out better. For those of you who wanted an update on last week's project, which is uh, trying tannic acid as an etchant, uh, it actually worked pretty well. It did take a while. This was after a couple of days. Uh, it's a little splotchy because I rubbed it with my finger, um, which, you know, you're not supposed to do. Uh, I think if I would have um, just washed it off and sprayed it with compressed air and basically do what I do with coffee, it would actually look pretty good. Uh, it is very durable, as durable as coffee doesn't quite have that shiny look or as shiny as coffee but this also doesn't have any oil on it so um, 
yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. It's a little, um, almost like a little more purpley than coffee, but uh, something to keep in the back pocket for sure. Uh, I was uh, told by uh, a viewer that uh, this will actually stick more to oxide, so if I would have etched this longer in ferric first, I probably would have had better results. So, um, yeah, I may try this again in the future. I also want to mention our channel sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. If you need anything knife related, whether it's steel, ferric chloride, handle material, spacers, you name it, epoxy, anything you need for knife making, check out Maritime Knife Supply. The link's down in the description. You can shop in US dollars, take advantage of that US to Canadian exchange rate. They have quick shipping as fast as any of the other US sites, so go check them out. So the melting point of brass is about 1710 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna set the oven at 1800. Uh, yeah, we'll hold it for a while. All right, we'll let that heat up. And we're just gonna take our crucible. I'm not sure how much we need, so better to have too much and pour all these shells in it. All right, let's let it heat up and then we'll throw it in. After a few minutes, I decided to check on the progress, still not melted. I ended up cranking the temperature all the way up to 1930, just to make sure I had enough heat. Now it's time for the pour. As I poured the very first bit in here, it didn't seem like it went down the hole. And for the safety sallies out there, I was wearing gloves, full face shield, apron, and even a breathing mask, just because there's zinc in brass and I didn't want to breathe that. I poured the remaining in this steel tube just with some sand packed in the bottom. We'll use this for next time. Yep. Oh. I was pleasantly surprised when I flipped it over and I saw my complete casting in the mold. So first, here's the brass that was left over uh, from the canister. You can see it kind of has a little puddled look. Um, it looks like it wasn't that hot when it poured. When I poured the other one, I thought for sure that it was not molten enough to go down um, into the mold, but it actually came out really well. Uh, I'm amazed, actually, at how well this came out. So I call this a success. Um, I'm going to cut this off and then uh, shine it up and we'll see how we did. So there it is, all shined up. It looks really good. You can see the uh, the eagle on it. Um, I really like it, but the part that I don't like is this part. I think this is a little thin for what I need, and you can see somehow it's on a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to end up recasting this for the final project, and I think I'm going to um, cast this whole thing as just a big cylinder um, kind of long and then turn it on the lathe so I get this the back of this and this thing perfect because it does have to uh, screw onto the back of the sword but this was definitely a great learning experience and uh, gives me a lot of confidence that um, yeah I can do some casting thanks folks we'll see you on the next one